Hey guys, welcome back to DIY Technical Design. We're in section seven where we're going to be talking all about packaging, logos, labels, and tags. All right, guys, for this section, I decided to create a Pinterest board specifically for packaging logos, labels, and tags so that you guys could find some really awesome inspiration for your brand. So go ahead and check out that board. I'll have it linked below in the description as well as in my blog post. Your packaging for your product is going to vary between when it's shipped and when it's sold. So depending on how you're selling your product, whether it's online or in store, you'll want to package your product appropriately for that avenue. Now, when it's being sent to you from your factory, it obviously needs to be protected. Um, usually it's being imported from another country if you're in the US. Um, and you want to make sure that your product is going to arrive safely and intact. To make sure that your product arrives safely, you'll want to cover any sort of um, things that can snag in plastic or in um, tissue paper, you'll want to make sure that your garment is folded so that it won't be creased when you take it out of the package, um, especially if it has some sort of decoration on it. You don't want the fold lines to go through that decoration because of the packaging from the factory is so compact and it usually takes quite a long time. Those creases can become permanent and it can be really hard to get them out, especially if you are repackaging your garments um, from the point they get to you to when you're gonna sell them. You don't wanna have to go through every single garment and iron it out or you know whatever. So um, just keeping those things in mind of where you want your garment folded um, can be a really great way to mitigate any damage and to make sure that your products arrive safely. You'll need to be aware of the fabric that you've used to create your garment or apparel product. In some cases, you may need to put tissue paper in between the folds just to make sure that the fabric isn't abrasive against itself. Some other things to keep in mind are covering up any metal findings or trims just to make sure that they don't get scratched in transit. Usually you're going to keep each garment in a separate poly bag. You'll need to call out exactly how you'd like your garment packaged in a special page in the tech pack and you can call this your packaging page. You can call it out in several different ways. Um, you can draw it and show how you would like the garment folded and what kind of box you'd like it put in and how you'd like it put in the box. It really just kind of depends what your product is. But any materials that are going into your packaging, you'll want to put on your BOM page. You can either sketch out how you would like your product to be packaged and include it on that page, or you could even include photos. When packaging your product for sale, you'll want to make sure that it's packaged in a way that makes it a really enjoyable experience for your customer to open. Whether that's at a retail store where it's going to be hung um, in a box or even just in a plastic mailer, there's so many great companies out there that provide really amazing packaging and really the sky's the limit. You can be as creative as you want to be. So definitely check out that Pinterest board that I created because I think it has some really great ideas. If you are used to using Pinterest, you'll know that you can use those ideas as sort of a jumping off point and you can scroll down to see other ideas related to it. And it can be a really great way to just get the juices flowing, um, to even get connected to different manufacturers. So definitely check that out. In some cases, you may want to include an external logo mark on your product. You're probably pretty familiar with these. You probably own some clothes with those already on them. Um, Nike, Adidas, Tommy Hilfiger, all brands that use external logo marks as a part of their branding. External logo marks can act as a really great marketing tool for your products. There are so many different methods for adding an external logo mark onto your garment or accessory. There have been so many advancements in the different types of materials and the way things are applied that really the sky is the limit. And again, you can check out the Pinterest board that I created or do some of your own research. You can look at your own clothing. You can go to the mall. Um, there's so many different ways of adding external logo marks onto your garments. Um, there's really standard things like tags, leather tags with your logo imprinted on the sleeve, um, embroidery, raised logos, um, 
heat transfer logos. I mean, really the sky's the limit. And there are so many brands who have created really creative ways of adding um, external logo marks in a way that really enhances the design instead of just being sort of like a marketing mark. Um, so definitely check out some different inspiration if you'd like to include an external logo mark on your garment. Now, an external logo mark is not necessary. You don't have to include it. It's entirely up to you and the vision you have for your brand. If you do decide to include an external logo mark, just keep in mind how that external logo mark is going to perform over the life of the garment. You may want to test the washing, the abrasion, um, if it has any flaking or just test out how it washes and wears and see if you need to make any changes. Your factory can help you with this in that they aren't going to offer to create something for you if they haven't created it before and so they should have a good idea of how that method performs over the life of the product. Keep in mind that the method you choose for adding your external logo mark may mean that you need to open a mold and um, that can be quite expensive up front but if you are willing to invest in that, you can use that mold going forward over different products as well. Um, so just something to consider as you move forward in your design process. Tags are the informational cards that are attached to your garment. Your tag will house the name of your brand, the price of the product, the color, the name if applicable, and of course an identifying number which could be the style number or even a barcode. You may include some other additional items such as special style details or instructions. In most cases, your tag is going to be a hang tag which is attached to your garment either by piercing through the fabric or through the um, loop label in the back neck or depending on what type of product it is, it may be placed in a different place. However, your tag may also be just a sticker if, it's, if your product's being sold in a box um, or something along those lines. But that information does need to be somewhere on your garment in order for you to give the information to the consumer. This is especially important if you have a brick and mortar store where your customers are coming in and shopping through your products. In some cases, if you are selling online, you may not need to include as much information. Again, there are so many options for creating your hang tags, um, everything from the design, the color, what they're made out of, um, to the layering of different cards. You can make a really amazing impact with your consumer just based on the design of your hang tag. So again, you can check out the Pinterest board that I created and you can take a look at some of the ideas I put on there and hopefully that will spark some creativity for you. Your hang tag can be attached either by your factory before it is shipped to you or it can be attached by you or your team when it arrives. Your labels live on the interior of your garment. Your main label, which is usually in the back neck or in the waistband of a pant, it includes your brand name as well as typically your size label. Your secondary labels are your care label and your manufacturing label, which are usually in a less noticeable place like a side seam. Included on your secondary labels are information about how to wash the garment, where it's been made, what the fiber content is, and any other special information. It is required by law to include the fiber content and where the garment is being made, as well as any care instructions. It is also required that you include the languages for any of the countries in which your garment is being sold to. The care label can get extremely complicated. There are so many different symbols and they only slightly vary from one to another and they all mean something different. Furthermore, the care symbols are different for every single country. It can be difficult to know what to include. I have included on that Pinterest board some diagrams um, that can be helpful and there are tons of resources out there for figuring out what the care symbols are. In some cases, your factory may be able to um, provide you some assistance with this. Typically, they will have the ability to um, 
either source or create themselves the labels for inside of your garment. However, you do need to include a page in the tech pack that tells them what to print on those labels. It is also an option to source your labels separately, have them sent to the factory and sewn into your garment. There are quite a few different ways that you can attach your labels into your garment. Um, you could do heat transfer labels, mitered labels, centerfold labels. There's a ton of different options and I go into more detail about that in my blog post. Finding manufacturers for the packaging, logos, labels, and tags for your garments can be a bit overwhelming, but just a simple Google search can yield hundreds of results for different places that you can source those goods from. As I said before, your factory may be able to help you in some cases. A lot of factories are already equipped to ship your um, garments or accessories to you and they want to make sure that your products are getting to you safely because if anything is damaged in transit, it may fall back on them. So they are a partner with you in this, so definitely talk to your factory first and see what options you have. If you're sourcing your packaging separately, you can, as I said, just do a simple Google search. The easiest way to um, narrow down your search is to use really specific terms. Maybe you're looking for something really custom, um, matte tags, die cut. These are all great words to use when you're looking for a specific type of packaging. Because the needs for packaging will vary so much from product to product, I'm not gonna go through every single option. I think that if you do a little bit of research and look at some things that maybe you've purchased or even just looking at pictures online, you can get a good idea of what requirements you have for your unique needs. Sourcing packaging is also going to be limited by the minimum you're able to afford. However, I have found that if you're doing much smaller quantities of your products, the Etsy and um, places like Amazon can be a really great place to find affordable packaging, um, especially if you're looking for something custom, Etsy is a great place to look and they actually have some really great prices for some really unique packaging. In my blog post, I've included some links to manufacturers for packaging that I have used. Um, so you can just find that link down in the description. All right, guys, that does it for section seven. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, like, subscribe, comment, and share, and I'll see you next week with section eight.